Hello and welcome to another Does to Who Tips and Tricks video. This time we're going to be taking a close look at the Does to Who Groom workflow that um, first came in release 0 0.3, um, but we'll be using 0 0.4, which if you're watching this video will have already been released. Um, the reason there was such a quick jump from 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 is that as I was recording this video for the first time, I came across a scenario or basically an issue with the um, eyelash layout here. Um, and it's not something I'd uh, tested before, believe it or not. I typically use fiber mesh eyelashes and they convert just fine. Um, but I thought for the sake of this tutorial, I would look at this traditional sort of card based eyelash setup. Uh, and that's when I first spotted uh, a problem with release 0 0.3. Um, it wasn't so much a bug as just uh, uh, something to do with the UV layouts that I hadn't anticipated. I just assumed that when people were creating these eyelash cards, they were following a more traditional UV layout for hair cards, but that's not the case. So I was able to find a way of working around that, which I included in release 0 0.4 and which we will be able to have a look at in this video as well. So this is the character we're going to be testing uh, the grooming workflow with initially. It has uh, a few different types of grooms on it. Uh, most of them are these micro, I guess, pair card styles. So these are, they're not strand based. Um, we can convert strand based hair from Daz Studio, but uh, on this figure, these are all hair cards, albeit very small ones. Um, and the only exception is the eyelashes, which are a more traditional sort of hair card style, I suppose. Um, the hair is geometry, it looks like, little tiny polygon strips, um, as are the eyebrows, so various different um, types of hair that, uh, that we can have a look at. And I think there'll be more than one video uh, to do with grooming, as it's uh, there's a lot of different um, edge cases, I suppose, and a lot of different hairstyles. Uh, I'm starting with what is probably the easiest, um, which is hair that is uh, spaced out properly, basically, um, with the exception of the eyelashes, that is. Often, particularly with long hairstyles in Daz, when they're made from cards, you will see uh, just very long hair strips or polygon strips, most of them placed at the top of the head and just sort of flowing down the side. And they are much more challenging to convert to a convincing looking groom um, so we'll come back to that probably in a future video but i think we have uh, more than enough uh, to play with in this video one other thing while we're in does here to mention is that i have had problems exporting some types of hair using the um, fbx exporter or the send to, to Maya exporter um, it for me seems to freeze. I've sort of waited about five minutes and it still hasn't progressed and in the end I've just sort of force quit Daz Studio to to fix it. But the good news is that we don't need the hair to be on the FBX character. We really only need it on the Alambic cache uh, and we also don't need it to be in the same Alambic cache as the character. We can export it and import it into Houdini separately. Um, so I'm going to cover off, I guess, both those scenarios. Now, some hair does export fine uh, through X FBX, and um, and some not. Uh, I think it's particularly the actual strand-based hair, where there's a lot of unique strands um, that the FBX exporter seems to struggle with. So to demonstrate both methods, uh, what I'm going to do is hide the uh, head hair and so we won't uh, export that as FBX. I will export all the other different types of hair as FBX, just so we can look at the, the different import options in Houdini. So I'm going to export the character with the remaining grooms as FBX using, using the standard 
does to Hue workflow. Uh, I'm going to have the character as sub D1. I usually leave the hair or the grooms as a sub D0 because we can up-res them in Houdini if we need to. And the scalp and, and this ash hair should actually be excluded because they are hidden. We'll see what happens there. So we'll export that. Okay, so that's finished exporting. We'll now export the Lambic cache again, just in the usual way. Now I will just collect all those files into my characters working directory. We'll grab the Alambic cache and the FBX and DTU files. Now before we leave DAS, I will unhide the head here and I'm going to export Alambic cache again, so we don't need the FBX this time. Just the Alambic cache. And again, we're doing this in the off chance that I'm trying to export this hair. Um, crashes the FBX exporter basically. Okay, so that's exported. We can close DAS now and then I'll just grab that second Alambic cache. This is the one with our head hair. I'll just call it hair and put it in our working directory as well. So now we can jump into Houdini. So here we are inside Houdini uh, and I've, I'm have i using a save file that already had this particular character prepped, albeit it didn't have any grooms in it. Um, so that'll be our starting point. Uh, if you haven't watched the previous tutorials, I suggest you do so um, if you're interested in how we use the rest of the workflow here, but um, this video will just be focusing on the grooms. So the first thing I can see is that uh, the hair cap has been exported in the FBX, even though it was hidden, so I'm not sure why that is, um, but it's easy enough to fix, so under the delete from FBX option I'll just select this ash hair scalp. And what I'm actually going to do is delete all of the hair off both the FBX and Alambic. Uh, and you'll see why in a little bit. Now what I'm going to do now what I'm actually going to do now is delete all of the hair from both the FBX and the Alambic cache. Uh, the reason being that I don't want any of that hair geometry flowing through the rest of the workflow. For example, we don't want uh, any joint corrective morphs being created for them. Uh, they will ultimately end up as uh, groom assets in Unreal Engine, so separate from the skinned character that, that we have here. So let's do that. Under the Delete from FBX, we will basically select all of the hair. So the beard, eyebrows, Eyelashes. We'll do the same for the alambic cache. Eyelashes, uh, eyebrows, and the beard. Oops. So now our point counts match. Uh, so the rest of the character export workflow should work fine. So I am just going to quickly export this base figure now without any of its hair. So that's finished. So now we can focus on the groom side of things. So to get started, under the Dastahue shelf, there is a new Dastahue groom button. So if I click that, I'll get two nodes created. Uh, there's the Dusty Hue Groom and the Export node. So what we need to do, there's a few things we need to do on the Groom node just to get up and running and before that error disappears. First thing we need to do is give it a skin source. So 
The grooming workflow still needs some reference to the character's skin. Uh, it uses that for things like uh, collision detection, so trying to prevent hairs from passing through the character's geometry. It also uses it for things like a UV lookup, so transferring the UVs from the skin to the hair roots, which is useful for some material setups in Unreal Engine, depending on how you set up your hair materials. So under this skin source geometry tab, um, well, we have two ways of passing skin or the character skin to the node. The first is just to use the input. So the first input is a skin. So we can take our FBX skin from one of these other nodes and plug it in. Um, but my preferred way is what I'm about to show you because I'm not a fan of wires crisscrossing too much. Uh, is to drag the node that we want to, to be our skin source and drop it into this import from field up here uh, and that will set it for us. I do recommend you use the UV node as your skin source. Um, as I say it will transfer UV attributes from the skin to the hair roots so if you are doing any UV operations on, on your character it makes sense to use that as the source. The next thing it needs is our alambic cache, um, which will contain our, our groom source geometry. Uh, and again, we could take an alambic cache from another stream and plug it in. Uh, the problem there, though, is not only that the wires get messy, uh, but also you'll recall we deleted our hair from the alambic cache. Um, so the way I'm going to do it is similar to what we just did with the skin. I'll take this import node, drag it and drop it in this import from field. And what that will do is it will get past a reference of that alambic cache prior to anything being deleted from it. Uh, so it will now have visibility of all the grooms that we deleted from this point down. The final thing we need to do to get rid of the error is to tell it which part of that alambic cache we want to convert to a groom. So if I select, sorry, first set the display flag to the groom node. Now if I select this source group option, we can pick one of our uh, groom or hair geometries uh, to be the source. So I'm going to start with the beard. So you can see it immediately converts or tries to convert that source geometry into uh, essentially curves or hairs if you like. Um, one thing to point out is that as far as Houdini is concerned uh, the term hairs or guides or curves are basically interchangeable. They are all curves as far as Houdini is concerned for the most part. So you'll probably hear me swapping between them. Uh, and apologies for that, but um, just understand that they are all one and the same. In the visualize options for the groom node, we have quite a few different options. Uh, if we have a look at the source geometry, or the groom source rather, to, to start with, you can see this is the geometry it's using to generate those curves from. And we can see it, this particular beard had a scalp or a, a beard cap or a some other piece of geometry, uh, and we don't we don't need that. And we don't want to use that to generate curves from because that's what's giving us this odd hair going up the middle there. So rather than selecting the whole beard, what I'll have to do is select the individual parts of it. You can see them here. There's a uh, four of them, so we'll select this beard B1, B2, B3. B4, and we'll leave that beard scalp off. Um, we'll just have a quick look at some of the other visualization options before we move on. Actually, before we do that, so we'll have a look at the uh, skin option, and that's the skin that it is imported and is using for 
uh, geometry, uh, for collisions rather. Now, we don't need the entire character and all the clothing. It's uh, probably not performant to use that uh, because what it's actually doing under the hood, and we'll have a look in, at it in a minute, is it's creating a volume of all this geometry, uh, a volume representation that it uses internally to do all the collision detection. And uh, as I say, we don't need the entire character for that collision detection. We really only need the head. So back on the skin source geometry tab under skin group, I'm just going to select the head. And that will now be used to generate the volume or the VDB as they're called in Houdini. That will act as our collision geometry. And we can look at that VDB just by selecting the skin VDB option. That's what it looks like. If we have a look at this VDB adjustments visualization option, what we do want to try and do is get the both the original geometry mesh and the VDB to basically occupy the same space as close as we can, so have the same boundaries. We don't want the VDB for example, jutting out too much like that, or being sunken in too much. We want it to sit as closely as it can on the original geometry. And the reason for that is that um, when we start putting down hairs, we don't want them to um, be offset from the original geometry. We want them to kind of be touching if possible. Um, we also have the option to subdivide the uh, skin geometry uh, and it's probably a good idea to at least subdivide it once in most cases. You want a fairly high polygon count. That will also influence the uh, I guess smoothness of this VDB and again it just helps get it to get more accurate collisions as we're placing down hairs. So we'll go back to the default view, which is where we'll spend most of our time. Uh, and that gives us a nice view of both the original skin geometry and the hairs uh, overlaid. Now, you'll notice that the hairs, in this case, have a red tip. Uh, so hairs have a direction in, well, most 3D apps. They have a root and a tip. And we need to make sure that they are the right way around. Um, so the way I set it up is that the red parts of the hairs should be the root. Um, so in this case, they've come in reversed. So what we want to do is reverse, again, that direction. So under our Curves Pre-Processing tab, we have a, a Reverse Directions option. And that will fix that up. So we now have the red part as the hair root. There are some scenarios where you will only want to reverse part of the geometry. Uh, we'll get to those later. Uh, that was one of the additions for dealing with the um, eyelash geometry that we're going to look at in a little bit that came in release 0.4. Um, quickly going through some of the other options. So the groom source geometry there is a checkbox to try and correct any non-manifold geometry on the original groom source. Um, I haven't needed it yet, to be honest. I haven't found that it makes much of a difference, but it's there in the off chance that some of these hair cards are non-manifold. Um, it will attempt to correct them. Uh, I'll leave it off for now. Um, this is another section that was added purely to deal with uh, the eyelash uh, setup that we'll look at in a little bit. Um, but I guess the important thing to know is that the way this works under the hood is all around UV space. So the ability for this node to generate these curves from the original geometry is very dependent on the UV layout of that source geometry. Uh, now, 99% of the time, uh, it works with the default settings, but the UV layout on those eyelashes that we'll look at in a little bit 
um, is all wrong for this process. So these options have been added to try and correct that. And no doubt there will be some other instances where there are DAS hair assets that um, have UVs all, all wrong. Uh, and hopefully this will help with that as well. So I'll touch on that when we get to the eyelashes. Um, there is one other view we haven't looked at, which is this debug view. That will show us everything basically. So the skin, the geometry source, and the curves that are being created from those geometry sources. Uh, under the UV pre-processing, there is a resample option. Uh, and this is, there's actually two resamples. So there's one in pre-processing, one in post-processing. The resample in pre-processing is done before the curve is projected back onto the original geometry. Um, it's, it's occasionally I found it useful, particularly for dealing with very long hair, or head hair, um, there are scenarios where you might want to adjust that. You may not want the original generated curves to be uh, hugging the the cards, the source cards, so much, and you can use this to to adjust that. Um, so if I lower the point count, you'll see that those curves start to, um, you know, not follow the. The shape of the original geometry so closely um, and like I say there are one or two scenarios where you might want that to be the case for very long hair that's sort of um, hugging the, the source geometry um, we'll cover that in more detail probably in another video but for now I think you can kind of leave this pre-processing resample off Uh, in the post processing, there. If we just go back to the default view, again, there are scenarios where you may want to reduce the number of source curves that are being generated. Um, we're not going to in this video. I don't think need that. But um, if you were, for example, to use some of Houdini's built-in hair generation tools, you may want to start with, with fewer, I guess, guide curves being passed into it. Um, but in our scenario, for, for this beard in particular, we are going to use each and every curve that is generated, uh, and then some probably. Finally, there is a post-process resample that I talked about. So this happens after the curve has been um, generated and projected back onto the original geometry. I'm trying to find a view where it's a little easier to see what's going on. If I turn on the point display, you can see this curve here now just has two points. It's got a start and end basically, and there's no definitely there's no curve in the middle as such. Uh, and there's two modes for resampling curves. There is the segment length mode, and basically that will ensure that each segment of the hair is the same distance in length. Uh, so if I lower that, the more I lower that, the more points will be added to the curve to ensure that that length remains the length that we've set here. The other method is just a straight number of points per curve, regardless of the curve length. So you can see the fewer points, the, the less it follows that original source geometry. The more points, the smoother it looks, but obviously there is a performance cost uh, in having too many points on your hair strands in Unreal Engine, just as there is a performance cost for having too many hairs overall. Generally speaking, the segment length is the more optimal because it will have fewer points on shorter hairs and more points on longer hairs, which is, as I say, the more optimal way of striking that balance between, I guess, performance, because you don't want to waste points on very short hairs. However, for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to leave it at a fixed length, and I think I'll do around 12 points per hair. Um, the last tab is not something you really need to worry about. 
it's just a debug. It allows you to change the gradient that's used to denote the root and tip colors. Um, it's primarily there for my benefit as I keep developing this particular node. Um, I figured I'd leave it in for now. So that's our out of the box starting set of hairs that um, that's generated from this groom source for this beard. So before we muck around with this any further, let's get it into Unreal Engine and uh, take a look at what it looks like. Um, so if we go to the export node, um, the export node doesn't have that many options uh, really. You will notice that some of the hairs have turned uh, blue and these will become physics guide hairs inside Unreal Engine. So it's only really relevant if you are planning on doing physics simulations on your hairs. Uh, I'm not going to for this beard because um, it's, it's too short to I think bother with physics simulations. But this option lets you set the ratio of hairs that will become those physics guide hairs in Unreal Engine. By default it's 33%. Um, you could also set a fixed number of hairs to become phys uh, physics guide. Um, for now I'm going to leave it I guess at the default, even though we don't need them at all really in this case. Um, the only other thing I need to do to export is give it a name. So in this case, we'll give it the character's name. And just call it beard and set an export directory. I'm just going to put it into my character's export folder. And I'll just hit the export button. And you can see it exports instantaneously. So we'll now jump over to Unreal Engine, uh, bring this groom in and just take a look at what it looks like as a, as a starting point before we do anything to it. So here we are inside Unreal Engine and I've already gone ahead and just imported the base character that we are working with. I uh, just assigned it uh, some, some skin shaders and this will be our starting point. So what I'll do now is just import that beard groom asset that we just exported. You can see it here. We don't need to change anything in this import dialog box. Once it's imported, drag it into the scene and zero out the location and it should then align with the character. What I'll also do is just give it a material. You can have a better look at it. So it's looking okay, but it's a little thin, uh, I think, for this character. I think we probably need a slightly bushier beard and we could increase the width of the hairs here um, but I think rather we'll go back to Houdini and just take a look at how we can try and add some more hairs. So back in Houdini what I'm going to use is one of Houdini's built-in nodes for working with hair. Uh, so what I'll do is right click We'll start typing in groom and we want this guide groom node and we want to connect it up in between our dust of hue groom node and the export node just like that now if i set the display flag to it unfortunately the guide groom node doesn't show the skin uh, and i really like to be able to see the skin and the guides as i'm working so to get around that, I'm just going to quickly drop down a merge node and I'm going to plug our skin, which is this output, into it and then I'll plug the guides out of the guide groom node into it as well. Now if I set the display flag on the merge node, we can again see both our character skin and the guides. And we can leave that as the display node, but we can work now with the guide groom node. The guide groom node is my go-to node at the moment for working with hair in Houdini. Uh, Houdini does have other hair related nodes, uh, but this node in particular is kind of the Swiss army knife of, of nodes for working with um, hair in Houdini. 
you can see it has a lot of different tools that we can play with and use to uh, adjust the uh, the groom that's that we have here. So, in order to add some more curves or hairs, whatever you want to think of them as, to this existing groom, uh, the best tool probably is this uh, plant tool. So under this tools option here, we can select plant, expand the brush options. You can see uh, there's many different options, but the main one we want to look at at the moment is density. So with that tool selected, if I hover over the viewport and hit enter, we will enter the uh, overlay for this particular tool, in this case the plant tool. And if I start painting, you'll see nothing is happening. And that's because of this density attribute. Now I don't know the maths behind what governs this. All I know is I need to make that pretty high before I start to see any hairs getting painted. Um, typically I will add a few zeros to it and just see how I go. You can see now we are getting additional hairs created. Um, so I'll undo that so we can do it a little bit neater. We want to, we want our existing hairs to influence the new hairs we're placing down so they'll take some of their shape and their curviness from the existing guides. We may or may not, depending on the circumstance, want uh, this interpolate relative to skin. There are certainly some scenarios where I think it's better to have it off. I think this might be one of them, so I'm going to leave it off in this case. Uh, segment count. I believe it will take the segment count of the surrounding or uh, curves that already exist, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Regardless if we need to, we can resample all the curves again down the track, so it's not a huge deal. I'll bump it up to 10 for now. Default length it will definitely take from the surrounding curves that it's using. So with that set, uh, we also have this, sorry, this mirror section as well, so we can mirror the strokes we make on the other side of the geometry, um, which is a good way of speeding things up if it's a symmetrical sort of groom. And we also have this mirror groom option which will mirror the entire groom on both sides. Now often you won't want that because hairstyles aren't typically that symmetrical. In the case of this beard however it's a very quick way of just getting um, double the amount of curves uh, into this groom. I'll leave it off for now though because um, I prefer to just work seeing the original groom and we might turn it back on later. So what I can do now is just start to paint the areas where I want to add more hairs basically. Um, I can use the scroll wheel on my mouse to adjust the size of the brush. I'm just going to sort of follow roughly the uh, placement of the existing curves and just fill them up a bit. Now I think this this groom uh, sort of fins out as it goes up, so I'm going to try and keep that aspect to it if I can as well. So what I can do is drop my density now a little bit. Again, I don't know the magic numbers here. I just kind of play around, see what works. So you can see now we're adding fewer hairs as we paint. I'm trying to get a bit of a gradient between where it's really bushy and less, less bushy as it goes up. We also have uh, a cull tool, which is, I believe, basically the inverse of the plant tool. So it still uses the density attribute and it will thin out hairs. 
to try and reach that set density. Um, so that's another way we can try and control that sort of gradient between where the hairs are very dense and less dense. Um, I'll quickly go through some of the other tools while we're here. Delete is obvious. Um, it will delete the entire hair. Cut will is basically like a pair of scissors. It will trim hairs. Um, what else? Sculpt is exactly what it says. It will sculpt hairs around. Typical brush shape. Um, but I'm not going to do that. Brush is very similar to sculpt, but rather than it, it only affects the roots or the, the root point, so it'll rotate the entire hair more or less. Um, it's, it's like I say, similar to sculpt, but not quite the same. I tend to use sculpt. Straighten is pretty self explanatory, as is lift. It will just lift will try and raise the hairs off the, uh, the uh, collision geometry a bit. Smooth is also pretty self-explanatory, it will just smooth things out a little bit. Um, I haven't had much luck with the move tool, I'm not entirely sure. Okay, it does work. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. There is another way to move individual strands if we need to. Um, but yeah, it looks like this will just lay to shift the again it's acting on the the root point shifting the entire hair around undo that <coughs> some of these others we'll we'll look at later um as we go so what i'll do now is just take another look at it in uh, unreal engine uh, it's always good to see what it looks like in engine before you spend too much time on it and this workflow i think is is quite fast to iterate on. So if I just hit the export again, you can see it's instantly exported. I go back to Unreal Engine. Now if I right click on the already imported Groom asset and just re-import, we should see it update in real time. It's now looking quite a bit bushier. Now I'm not going to spend too long trying to get this to look perfect. Uh, I'm not a groom artist. I, I do think there is an actual art to creating nice looking character grooms uh, and it's not a skill I possess. Um, so I'll leave that to you to uh, spend as much time as you want trying to get your grooms to look as good as you want. I will do one thing though that's bugging me which is just to thicken up this moustache area. So again I'll go back to our plant tool And just increase the density again. Fill that in a bit. What I might also do, just again to thicken the whole thing up, is just mirror the groom. And I'll export again. Re-import it into Unreal Engine. You can see we're getting quite a bushy beard now. So I'll leave the beard there and we'll uh, take a look at one of the more challenging uh, source geometry types to work with which is uh, the hair cards or at least in this case the, the eyelash cards. We'll just save this Unreal Engine scene. Uh, I do get I wouldn't say frequent but I do get the occasional crash when I have both Unreal Engine and Houdini running in the background I think my graphics card struggles a bit. So we'll call that done for our beard. Uh, what I'll do is just create a network box around it. Keep things organized. We'll call that beard just so we know what it's doing. Uh, I think the quickest way now to get started on the eyelashes is actually just to copy and paste our beard setup. We'll call this eyelashes. Um, so if we go back to our groom import node, 
first thing we need to change is the source group. So we're no longer interested in the beard. We're going to this time um, have a look at the eyelashes. Now if we go to this debug view, we can see a few things happening here. First, we can see that we aren't getting very many curves created. We only get one curve per geometry strip. The other thing we can see, perhaps in this view, if we swap to the curve view, we'll get a better look to the default view. The other thing we can see is that the direction of the upper eyelashes is correct, but the bottom isn't. Um, again, in release 0 0.3, I kind of just assumed that the direction of hair cards would have a uniform UV layout, um, but that's not the case necessarily. And the other thing we can see is that some of these curves are quite a way away from the skin. And as I said at the start, of, or towards the start of the video, all of this is to do with the UV layout of the incoming geometry, because all of this geometry to curve um, workflow works primarily in UV space. So what I can do is Again, this is just to sort of show you what's going on. If I um, bring up another viewport with a UV space on it, we have a look at the groom source. And we can see the UV layout that we have for these um, eyelash cards. Now, this isn't exactly the original geometry. The original geometry was, sorry, the original UV layouts were in this sort of fan shape. Um, release 0 0.4 automatically packs them into the first UDM as a starting point, regardless of the source geometry. But that's still not enough to fix the problems that we're seeing uh, with this with this eyelash setup. So for example, the curves aren't going necessarily along the, um, the, the geometry strips. And as we saw in this other view, they are stopping short of reaching the skin. Basically what we want, the ideal UV layout for this workflow is to have them in vertical strips, ideally. Um, we'll have much more success if we can get them into vertical geometry strips. Um, so release 0 0.4 now includes a few options to deal with that. The first thing I'm going to do is flatten them, and that will give us nice neat strips. Um, but they are horizontal and again if we go back to our t for u you'll see now that that has affected the orientation of the curves as i say we ideally want them vertical so we also have this rotate option and we will almost always be rotating in either 90 positive 90 or negative 90. it doesn't really matter because we can always reverse the direction of the curves but um, in this case, if I put in negative 90, we will now get nice vertical strips. And that's, as I say, the ideal starting point for generating curves, at least that I've uh, discovered so far. So we'll go back to a single view. And now if we have a look at our default view, we will see that the uh, eyelashes are now touching the skin again, which is good. And we can see still that we have... Um, the upper row of eyelashes has the correct direction, so the red uh, root is, is touching the skin, however the lower one doesn't. So if we go to our pre-processing tab, instead of reversing the direction of um, everything, which is what will happen if we leave this reverse group blank, what we only want to do is reverse the upper eyelashes. If I select eyelashes upper there, I'll now see that both the upper and lower have the correct root to tip orientation. So this will be the starting point for our eyelashes. Uh, and again, I'm going to rely on the guide groom node to see what we can do about giving this a more natural look. Uh, note, however, that I am not a, a groom expert nor am I a Houdini grooming expert. Um, 
I've only used a few of the nodes so far and I'm kind of experimenting and learning as I go. But I'll see what I can do to make these uh, look a little bit more realistic. So I'm going to do what we did before. I'll set the display flag on the merge node and I'll have my guide groom node selected. Before I do anything, I'm going to just clear it at the top here. Uh, you'll remember we copied this from the beard setup and so by clearing it, we make sure there's no um, cache data in there that's come across. So the first thing we'll try is just what we did before and use this plant tool to see if we can um, get some more guides in there. Um, <coughs> I'm going to bump up the density again and just start to paint. Another thing to point out is that we have this mode setting on the plant tool. So we've been using scatter, which will do just that. It'll scatter some points around, or some hairs around rather. We also have a single, so if we want to get very precise, we can change it to single and basically just plant individual hairs down as we want them. Uh, and you can use a combination of both, so the more I guess existing hairs it has to reference when you're planting new ones the um, the more accurate the interpolation gets I suppose so I'll we'll just quickly hand place just a few key ones in the gap here We can switch back to scatter mode and we might need to increase the density again. Just paint a few more. Now there are so many ways of driving hair attributes in Houdini, in particular things like density. You can paint an attribute onto the geometry itself, uh, similar to what we did for the occlusion retain delete attributes in the previous video uh, and it will use that attribute or it can be set to use that attribute to determine the density for that particular part of the geometry I think that's a subject for another day I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Uh, it's just a demonstration, but um, we'll quickly change to the delete node and I'll get rid of a few of these, I guess, mistakes. Um, another thing to point out is the node has a group option, and if you hit this little arrow, you can select individual hairs or you can hold down shift and select multiple hairs and then if you hit enter that will get added to the group and now any operations or any tools we use from now on will only affect the selected hairs um, so some of the other tools there is this transform handle tool um, and I find it a little buggy to be honest in terms of when it's when its handle actually shows, I haven't quite figured that out, but it's showing now. Um, and the transform handle, it's similar to the move brush, but a lot more precise in that you are, you know, moving a specific, a single hair basically to exactly where you want it. That's one way of dealing with any um, outliers, I suppose. Um, but remember to clear the group, otherwise You'll get confused like I often do and wonder why nothing else is changing. Um, clump brush might be a good option for eyebrows. When it, I think by the looks of it works at the root level. Oops. Uh, and it's way too strong, I think, by default as well. So if we lower the strength and just paint 
something very odd going on. There we go. Um, yeah, some, sometimes it's better to not have collide with skin on, otherwise weird things happen. Not 100% sure why. Like I say, not a Houdini groom expert. But, um, a lot of sort of trial and error. I will say as well, it, um, they have shown a few sneak peeks at the upcoming Houdini version 20. Uh, and one of the things they alluded to was better grooming tools. Uh, so I'm quite keen to see what that brings. Um, cause there are some, uh, it's very, it's a very powerful workflow, but there are some, uh, some limitations, I think. And my biggest complaint with it so far is not so much with this method, but there is a hair generation node, uh, and I don't like the way it interpolates hairs between guides. I think it's, it's very odd. Apparently it's, it's well suited for short, Haired grooms, uh, creature effects basically, I think is where it started life, so fur on, on creatures. Um, apparently it works very well for that, but it's not so well suited for certainly long hairstyles. So I'm hoping that gets improved in version 20 of Adini, which I believe is out in September, maybe. Anyway, I got sidetracked, so we'll just um, maybe try just clumping up a few of these guys to Get a different look for our eyebrows. Again, I'm not an artist, don't really know what I'm doing. Um, another brush or another tool we have is adjust the length. Um, it's another one that's super strong by default. Uh, so I'm going to lower its strength quite a bit. So I get something that's sort of working for us. Go even more. The way it works is that if you left click and sort of move your mouse, it will grow the hair. All those group hairs, I should say, that are in that brush radius. And if you middle click, it should um, it should shrink them again, but again, I've had this problem before where it doesn't. See if I can figure that out. Sometimes, if you escape to get out of the tool mode and then hit enter again to come back into it. It's actually doing something up there. Strength is just very low. Um, so yeah, if you middle middle click, it, it will uh, shrink them. Left click will grow them, basically. And I don't know, that might be good to have a little bit of variation, but not go crazy. Um, we can get the cut brush or tool and just trim some of these off where push them out a bit far perhaps. So I'm going to bring this into Unreal Engine um, just to get some idea of how we're how it's looking. Again, I don't want to spend uh, all night on this, it's just a demonstration. So what we'll do is on the export node, just rename it my eyelashes, I guess. Export it. Jump back over to Unreal Engine and import it. Same as we did before. Give it a material. Take a look at it. So we've only done the one eye. You can see the difference. Um, it's looking okay. I think it needs a lot more, not a lot more, but a few more, um, 
few more strands perhaps and I think what I like to do for the eyelashes in particular is um, reduce the tip width so tip scale I can basically almost zero it out I actually also want to do that on the beard but uh, yeah we'll do it lower here So obviously we could spend more time getting eyelashes to look uh, nicer, but I think I'll leave it at that for the purposes of this video. Um, the last thing I'm going to show you before we wrap up is um, you'll remember we exported the head hair as a separate alambic case, so it's not in our original source geometry. Uh, so we, we need to just slightly change the way we reference it. So what I'll do is I'll copy the beard setup, paste it. This will be our hair. Now on the groom node, rather than using this import from Uh, I'm going to use this source alambic field. I'm going to browse for that second alambic case that we exported out of Dose Studio. Uh, wrong directory. It's this hair one. And we'll import it from there. Now, we're not working with the bid anymore, so under the source group, we, will, we should see that we now have that hair geometry. I'm not going to worry about the scalp, I'm just going to get the hair. And I actually have um, the first time I've used this hair, so curious to see how it turns out. A lot more hair, uh, a bit longer to generate curves off of. It seems to have imported fine. Uh, so this hair has uh, 86, nearly 87,000 strands in it. So a fair amount. So by the looks of it, it's imported quite well. Its direction appears to be correct. Uh, the way they built this is it is hovering off the scalp quite a bit, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. Um, what I'll do is go to the groom node clear that just like we did before i'm just going to immediately export this because like i said i've never i've never tried this one before let's just have a look at how it comes out in unreal engine export that import it into unreal engine add it to the scene While I'm here, I think I'll just reduce the tip scale. Give it a material. And there it is. That turned out quite well, considering we didn't do anything to it. Um, but the purpose of that was to show you just that other method of working with a separate alambic cache as the source rather than importing from our character workflow. So I'm going to end this video here. Uh, I think it's gone on long enough. Uh, there will no doubt be other groom related uh, videos in future as I continue to experiment with different hair styles and different source geometries and also continue to um, develop the, the does to you groom related nodes uh, i've already spotted through making this video uh, i think a few areas where i can optimize performance and hopefully uh, fix up any potential issues so keep an eye out for future updates of does to you uh, but for now i'll leave it there i'll see you in the next video bye